I'm gonna get my shit together here. So I figured I should probably throw together a video on HR uh, four five two one, and then this is the American Competes Act that is supposed to be combating um, supply chain issues, um, just overall economic growth. Um, and it, unfortunately, it doesn't really do that. Uh, ever, which is something that we actually need. Uh, you know, ever since uh, Trump, the Democratic Party has pretty much went insane. They uh, are so reactive, they, they've become so, I guess, woke that they put this uh, ideology that's typically just nothing but talk uh, ahead of everything uh, and try to turn those into laws, into bills, and try to pass mindset versus something practical and, and applicable in the real world. And uh, this bill is, is no different. This, this should have been something that was, uh, you know, across the board, very bipartisan. Um, it was essentially supposed to allow us to compete better with China, to help uh, curb some of the uh, ridiculously uh, dangerous things China's doing to our economy. Um, in our country, like the massive amount of fentanyl that's coming into the country and killing people. Um, and they, they did talk about a couple things that were uh, alarming in this. Uh, I didn't realize that like a, a few years back when all the people's dogs and cats were, were dying, that was because of uh, some tainted uh, gluten or wheat product that they were sending here to, that was being used in dog food. And cat food, uh, got some other medical stuff some people were dying from, it, just a lot of things. And, you know, it, there's a ton of money that's going into this that would be uh, distributed in this bill to specific uh, sources, mostly green energy uh, type stuff. And I'm not opposed to green energy by any means, uh, but... It, you know, it, it it turned into basically a climate bill, and it was supposed to be a bill to ensure the, you know, American uh, free market uh, grows and, and, and creates a strong economy, and it doesn't really do any of that. And on top of that, you know, Democrats have tried to add so much junk into bills that would have normally had some support from Republicans that they just don't have it. And this is a prime example of that because this bill is almost 3,000 pages and it has so much stuff added to it. There's stuff in this bill that's going to um, give the Secretary of the Treasury uh, a lot of power involving cryptocurrency, allowing them to, without due process, shut down and terminate any kind of crypto transaction uh, that's you know uh, international or coming into this country. Uh, for no reason, you know, I mean, there's a lot of really weird stuff in it, and then you get into <clears throat> the issue with w that's affecting the reptile industry with the Lacey Act, and uh, I, I, this, I sifted through this, it was four or five hours, and uh, I didn't find much, maybe less than, I don't even know if there's, I know there's less than ten minutes, but uh, th this is the first clip I'll show you, this is a Democrat that's uh, very supportive of it, and I'll let you the Natural Resources Division also contains provisions to address wildlife traffic and trafficking and disease, th disease threats from wildlife. Scientists believe that the coronavirus that caused the COVID-19 pandemic originated from the wildlife trade in China. One provision will expand the fledgling Fish and Wildlife Service Law Enforcement Attaché Program to build up a U.S. presence in wildlife trafficking hotspots worldwide. Another provision, again based off of a Senator Rubio bill, addresses loopholes in the wildlife trade that could spread disease by amending the Lacey Act to allow for emergency bans on wildlife imports that threaten human health. Guys basically playing off the fear mongering and uh, the misinformation that COVID came from a bat, which I thought everybody knew by now that it, it was, you know, all the evidence is showing it came from gain of function research, which I gotta be careful saying that because even though this is about snakes, the uh, YouTube algorithm might catch us and pull my video down for, you know, me trying to kill people by talking about gain of function when I'm really talking about snakes. 
Um, but, you know, it, that's kind of crazy. And, you know, they want to do this and, uh, and grant Fish and Wildlife all this authority. And, you know, it's just a typical scare tactic. And for the Republican side, now I'll show you him in a second. He comes in and he's very opposed to it. So I'll let you take a look at what he had to say. This legislation makes several amendments to the Lacey Act, amendments that were snuck in without so much as a hearing in the Natural Resources Committee, likely because Democrats knew the pr provisions would not stand a chance if they were vetted through regular order and the legislative process. The provisions give blanket authority to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to determine what is an injurious species without any requirement for public input, advance notice or comment, dramatically expands Fish and Wildlife Service's authority to regulate movement of injurious wildlife within the United States, and makes wildlife importers guilty until proven innocent by requiring imported species uh, to appear on a Fish and Wildlife Service white list or have it treated as injurious by default. These provisions will be detrimental to American industries such as aquaculture, which are already highly regulated businesses. Uh, this act proves that Democrats don't plan on changing the narrative anytime soon. So as you see, he was very concerned about the massive amount of authority, authority that would be handed over to um, Fish and Game and also the uh, Secretary of the Interior, uh, creating a white list, which is basically a guilty till proven non-invasive or injurious list, uh, allowing them to add anything at whim. Um, and we've seen how ridiculously insane the government reacted to COVID. So I don't know, I would never want to grant uh, the government power to do anything oh, because somebody... Uh, some scientist that gets paid by both the government and <laughs> pharmaceutical companies says that, you know, uh, a bat made you sick, so, you know, banned all bats, you know. So, I mean, if it's a sheep or it's a cow or if it's a chicken or if it's a snake, you know, it's all the same. Like, you know, you just grant that authority and they're just going to do it. <clears throat> and he pointed out, obviously, that it's very detrimental uh, and it's it's not requiring any kind of proof, uh, you know, that this is being that what they're doing is legitimate and necessary. He is probably our greatest asset uh, right now. Uh, so I, 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 if you're a USARC member, you might want to talk to USARC uh, and suggest that they reach out to this guy and talk to him. Uh, you know, he's in the House Natural Resources Committee, and uh, he, he seems like somebody that the reptile industry needs to talk to. But as it stands now, I don't think this bill can pass just because there's so much junk in it. Now, I believe the House needs 218 votes to pass a bill. I believe they have 216 seats. So I, I can't say, you know, logically there's no reason for this bill to pass because this bill that was supposed to be for economic uh, security and growth is basically a, a green energy slush fund uh, bill that also had a massive amount of other amendments that should be their own bills added to it. So there's no rational reason for this to pass, and hopefully there's enough opposition that it won't. Now, the thing that I need to point out is in 2015, I, I publicly raised a lot of concerns about the U.S. ARC lawsuit. The U.S. ARC lawsuit had two parts, the arbitrary and capricious listing and the uh, interstate commerce issue. And I pointed out in 2015 that U.S. ARC members needed to push U.S. ARC to focus on the arbitrary and capricious listing. Because if they won on the interstate commerce, it would put fish and wildlife in a position where they would have to seek an amendment. And if you read what I said, I'll, I'll if I can if I can figure out how to post a link for on the screen so you can tap it or or, or click on it or whatever, or I'll put it in the, the description. Uh, it's on Fauna because because uh, they don't take stuff down, so it's in the general discussion. Um, you know, I pointed out that the animals, if they only went on the interstate commerce, the animals will still be on the Lacey Act, and that means that. The Fish and Wildlife can just get the Lacey Act amended to have their authority cover interstate commerce, and then we're right back to square one, all the money on that lawsuit wasted. And I also pointed out that it would force them 
it's going to force their hand to do this because the interstate commerce part of the lawsuit wasn't specifically de dealing with snakes. It was dealing with what authority Fish and Wildlife had. So that so after U.S. Arc was successful in arguing their case, and the judge ruled in in their favor, that now meant that everything on the Lacey Act could legally go across state lines. Everything that is legitimately invasive or injurious and damaging to the environment. The only way that any of those things couldn't go across state lines is if there was a law prohibiting it on the state level. So it was really forcing Fish and Wildlife's hand to have to get it amended now, which will put us back to square one. But if you read what I said, I said not only will Fish and Wildlife seek to get it amended, but they will seek out to have even more authority. And uh, in the end, they're going to walk away with more authority and being able to regulate interstate commerce. You know, the least that this industry could do is learn from its mistakes. And I don't see that happening. I see everybody throwing money at U.S. Arc again about this and saying, why are they doing this? Why are they coming after our snakes? Blah, blah, blah. That's not what they're doing. Fish and Wildlife was put in a ridiculously bad position to not be able to regulate interstate transportations of legitimately invasive animals. So I think U.S. Arc really failed the industry by not having discussion with their members and saying, listen, if we only win on this one part, we can be right back at square one as soon as the Lacey Act gets amended. It's not a permanent fix. Putting this much emphasis on just the interstate commerce aspect of the lawsuit is simply kicking the can down the road. And we're gonna have to deal with it again, and when it comes time to deal with it again, which is pretty close to now, because now it's in a bill that could pass if some things go right, now they're going to have to file a second lawsuit to finish the first lawsuit, and the industry would have to pay for that. But is the industry willing to pay for that at this point? Is the industry really willing to throw out the million dollars or more that it will take for U.S. ARC to fight to get the snakes removed from the Lacey Act. And this is the other thing that U.S. Arc needed to explain to everybody. A lot of those snakes that were added were already illegal to import or take across state lines because of their endangered status in their, in their uh, country of origin. The Southern Af Afroc, the Indian, the Silanese, the a couple of the Greens, those were already illegal to import, ergo illegal to take across state lines because of their listing uh, for their uh, endangered status. So there was no saving those. So even though we won on the interstate commerce, you still legally can't take Indian pythons across state lines or Silanese or Natalensis, not that anybody has them. That's not the point. So there was only really a handful of snakes that they were actually going to be able to save. So that was a conversation that, that should have been had. And, it, and people should have been informed that they were donating to U.S. ARC. And U.S. ARC was going to take that money and argue a, uh, a technicality of, of linguistics for 18 U.S.C. 42. And was potentially putting us in more danger for later down the line, later on, and putting Fish and Wildlife in a position to have to get the Lacey Act amended, and as all government agencies do, seek more authority to regulate. And that's where we're at now. That's why now they're trying to add a whitelist, and they're using and they're doing this under the guise of COVID as for our safety, which we know is a lie, because we know pretty much everything we were told about everything about concerning that was a lie. So that's where we're at. So this bill, I think this bill will pass in some form. I, I don't, 
think it can pass in its current form because it's about it encompasses so many things and so many amendments that should be their own bills that should be going out to natural resources committee and stuff like that to be debated and amended from there so and plus the biden administration has been absolutely uh horrible at, at doing anything they've wanted to do um, which was uh, hilarious he just uh posted on twitter today we can end cancer now like so now biden's curing cancer as of today according to his twitter but uh you know that's where we're at that you know and as much as i wanted to support us arc after why it left watching how they handled that uh, lawsuit and watching how they let bob clark come in who had a pending lawsuit against him for taking berms into Texas, and then U.S. are putting no emphasis on the arbitrary and capricious listing and all of their energy and money into the interstate commerce, which then, when they won, the lawsuit against Bob was dropped. Why wasn't that explained to anybody? Why was somebody who had some, such a vested interest in one aspect of U.S. ARC's lawsuit, why was that person allowed to bring in I think it was what Richard Stanley or somebody, and and help so much and focus on that part because Bob has had the most to gain from that because that meant his lawsuit was automatically done. And what has he done since then? When it comes to big snakes, he has had auction after auction on Facebook for large constrictors, and whoever's got the money and throws the most money down gets it. There's no. Not that there should be a big vetting process or an intensive vetting process, but, you know, retics aren't for everybody. They're not for everybody. They're a potentially dangerous snake. And they do a lot of damage, and they, and they kill people from time to time. And the industry basically paid for a lawsuit so Bob didn't have to. At the same time, they were donating to the organization that should have been explaining to them the repercussions of focusing so heavily on only the interstate commerce aspect of their lawsuit and how we were just going to end up right back in the same place. You know, U.S. ARC doesn't bring in that much money. I think they uh, they used to average, and they might still, like 300000 or 350000 And... Roughly a hundred thousand of that goes to pay Phil Goss's salary. So after the salary gets paid, you're at a quarter million dollars for the entire organization, and that's nothing when you're trying to do lobbying, when you're trying to pay attorneys, when you're trying to file lawsuits, when you're trying to stay uh, ahead of the curve on all this anti uh, reptile legislation that's popping up everywhere. So. These, if you're a U.S. ARC member and a U.S. ARC supporter, you need to tell U.S. ARC you want to have a real conversation about these issues. And the industry is so reactive. From what I've seen is we wait for things to get really bad and either legislation gets uh, proposed or passes and then the industry comes out, well, let's fight against it, like the Tegu stuff. You know, that Tegu issue started before Trump. Why wasn't the industry trying to work with fish and wildlife in Florida to, to curb this issue? Why wasn't the industry raising money to donate to fish and wildlife or to start some sort of program to remove these animals from the environment? Because they are legitimately invasive. And you have people like Kevin McCurley arguing about, well, it's absurd because this tegu needs the bermaid, but this tegu doesn't, and it's and it's in, and why isn't the 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 government taking these things into consideration? It's because they don't care. A tegu is a tegu to the government, just like a retic is a retic to the government, or a big snake's a big snake. They're not going to argue or or take into consideration these specific points when their goal is to eliminate a problem. So we have to accept the fact that the government isn't necessarily interested in which tegus burn made and which tegus don't, which tegus can handle colder temperatures and which can't, or which 
you know, which big snake can't possibly survive in, in which state. These are things they should care about, but they're not going to. And the, the sooner you accept that, the better. And the only way you're going to get them to care is to do it on a legal front in a way that forces them to own up to those facts. So if you're not willing to drag their asses into court and talk about that stuff, then it's a moot point. Bitching about it on Instagram, you know, while at the same time, um, I'll have to put it, I'll put it in this video, actually, I'll just pull it up and record it. You know, you got Kevin on there talking about how I'm spreading conspiracy theories and lies about U.S. ARC, and it's like, what are you talking about? All I'm talking about is what the reality is, and this is the real reality we're in, and we're going to keep losing if our method of protecting our rights is waiting till somebody has is trying to take them away or has taken them away and then getting mad and complaining on the internet throwing money at us arc and then trying to go from there you know that and i even get attacked by uh this guy named ronnie bolich who has been a huge distractor of us arc and ronnie has been working very very hard to once again he likes to tell and Incredible stories. He doesn't tell the truth. He it, it's 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 frustrating because for years he was bad mouthing US Ark and they always try to they always come with these conspiracy theories. You, they need to show where every penny goes and this and that. I'm like Rodney, stop. They are not collecting money so these people can can steal the money. US Ark, the people behind US Ark, which is Gary and Todd and Phil. This is an influx of money. The money isn't being thrown in there by the hobbyists and then these, these people are making grabs. That is not true. None of that is happening. We need to stop with the stuff, but Rodney and I are at odds. It's easier to prevent something from happening than it is to undo something. And we don't, the industry doesn't seem to want to learn that or accept that. So, um, but you know, that's about it for this video. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to put this out and you're going to have Ryan Potter and, and Kevin McCurley and people like that saying that don't watch it because it's full of lies, even though I'm just stating facts and showing uh, what happened in a hearing. Um, then you got a whole bunch of people that just generally don't care. And the other unfortunate thing is US ARC isn't even going to take time to put out a video like this. They're not going to take time to inform you um, and show you what was talked about in this in this hearing, and explain this bill. You know they're gonna they're gonna send out an action alert, and then everybody's gonna say, "Well, give them money, give them money," and nobody's gonna demand a plan of action from USR. That's what you need as a member. As if you're paying to be a member, that means you are their boss. So you get to tell them what to do. Demand a plan of action, and demand they be upfront and honest with all of you from here on out because the lack of transparency and the lack of dishonesty is what got us into this mess if this would have been explained in 2015 to everybody the industry as a whole would have demanded us arc uh change directions in its method of of handling the lacy act listing we wouldn't be in this situation and i said this would and i said this seven years ago that this is going to be the situation we get ourselves into. So we're here now. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's reality. I can't help it if people are too dumb to understand cause and effect. Um, it, that doesn't make me a conspiracy theorist. It just makes me somebody who understands reality. So uh, take it for, with a grain of salt, and uh, I, I hope... Uh, I hope all the US ARC men members do what they need to do and have a, a real discussion with US ARC and demand they start doing what their job is, which is proactively engaging in a productive method uh, for protecting everyone's rights. They're taking your money to do it, sending an email once in a while. What's that going to do? You know? not telling everybody that the consequences of winning the interstate commerce 
part of their lawsuit and ignoring the arbitrary capricious listing was kicking the can down the road and, uh, and potentially causing a much worse situation. Well, that's what they did, and that's what happened. So, uh, you know, it's up to you guys. U.S. ARC is only going to be as good as you demand they be, so you need to start demanding more of the people you're giving your money to to protect your rights.